Welcome to the Richesum Reverse Engineering Channel. Been doing a lot of talking about smart meters and smart meter technology. I have some other videos covering that and, and while there's other stuff on this channel about reverse engineering, it's been pretty heavy smart meters lately. And so just a quick overview, so smart meters, the ones made by Landis and Gear used here in Dallas, um, primarily by Encore, which is who I'm looking at, they transmit across a big mesh network and and once they leave the meters mesh network, they go up to these routers and collectors and other devices. And inside of those devices, there's some modems. They look like this. They look like some other things. There's some bare board versions, like one that's on my bench back here that I'll show a picture of. And, and once they hit those modems, the data goes from those to some kind of computer system over a cellular modem or some other connection back to the, the power company, which is how it transfers the, the data back. And so I was curious to try to talk to these. They have an RS-232 interface on here, and so they hook up through a serial port to a computer. And, and so I, I plugged in a connection to them and tried to talk to them, and I had some success putting some of the older units into a test mode. Some of the ones that look like uh, this right here. So there's a jumper on here and I put it into a test mode and I was able to connect to one of these serial ports on the bottom of this and see a diagnostic menu and, and change different values in these and, and send test packets and receive packets. But I wasn't able to actually talk to it in its kind of native operating mode where packets are coming coming into the port here and then it's translating that and hopping around on the, the frequency side and sending that data out to the meter. So all the meters, they hop around their you know, different, different channels within this 900 megahertz band and, and they send all their data around. And these modems also hop around and are able to send data to those meters. And so the, the computer side, you just send data you want into the network and it figures out how to hop around and communicate with the meters. So it's kind of a translator from- Dags. What? Yeah, dogs. Dags. Is that dogs? Oh, dogs. Sure. I like dogs. From just some raw data coming in and out to this whole meter mesh hopping network, which is how I think of these things. So I thought it would be interesting to figure out well, how do they talk to these? What are they sending as far as data? And and so it, it hit me a while back that this collector that I have, perhaps I could log some data between it and the modems and, and learn more about them and, and learn how there's a, a little LED on here and some of them it's a red and green LED. And, and when I would plug it into this, uh, this collector that I have back here that I've taken all apart and log the data, I would see that the light would go from red to green. And so I figured out that if I would plug any other modem into there, sometimes I'd have to plug its original modem in first, but if I unplugged it and plugged another modem in, then that modem would also communicate with it and the light would turn green. And, and so I, I, I realized that I could pretty much hook up any of the modems I have, at least I've tried a few of them so far, and it will, it will eventually communicate with them and it sends it some configuration data. I'm not quite sure what it is that it's sending right now, um, but it causes it to, to go from that red state to a green state. So it's, it's doing something to initialize it and, and get it into a happy place, I guess you could say. And so I logged some of that data and, and what you see here on the screen is some of those packets and, and the serial packets, it seems like it communicates in, in a group of uh, three messages. So it'll either be that the modem sends a message to the computer the computer sends one back and then the modem sends one, or the computer sends it, the modem sends it, then the computer sends it. And you'll see that there's a value that goes kind of a one, two, three. It might be C1, C2, C3, or 54, 55, 56, something like that. And, and so looking at these packets, I broke them apart and I'd been looking a lot at the radio side, the mesh side packets. And so these packets have a similar format that must be then translated into what is a hopping kind of mesh hopping packet. So we'll kind of say there's a mesh hopping packet that's going between all the meters and there's these packets that go into the modem to be sent out. And so looking at these packets, you can kind of break it up. There's a header, it always starts 0100. Then after the header, there's a length. So how many bytes are gonna come after that? Then there's this value that it kind of increments with each, maybe it seems like each good 
transaction because you'll see some there's some other packets that it'll go one two one two and it's kind of bouncing around before it gets to this one two three kind of thing so it might go c1 c2 c1 c2 and then it'll go c1 two and three and and so that must be when it finally negotiates whatever the transaction is um, and then after that there's the destination address then the source address so if it's a, a message to the to the computer the the interesting thing about this is that the the destination and the source you'll notice they look very similar the only difference is is that if the destination is the computer it strips off the first byte basically of the modem's address so the whole thing is the modem's address either starting with zero or eight zero which is what the modem's actual address was so so for some reason it strips that off and then after that comes the you could say the payload portion it looks like so it's some amount of data that varies depending on that length value um, you know that kind of defines the overall packet length then there's a CRC that's calculated and then a couple of ending bytes. If it's the modem sending the data, it ends in 04 AA. And if it's the computer sending it back to the modem, it just ends in 04. So that's this whole packet. And so it took a little while of looking at it and, and I took this capture, it was a very raw capture using my logic analyzer and it exported it to a spreadsheet. And I basically went through all those lines of the spreadsheet and converted it to this uh, Kind of nice document format so i could try to analyze it a little better and so after analyzing it it seems like even though i don't understand what the payload is the rest of the packet you know kind of feels like i understand what that is i can generate that crc it's just a simple uh crc x modem type uh, crc calculation the same one that i do on the hopping um the, the mesh side hopping packets only on that side, the power company uh, has this CRC adder that you've seen me talk about in other videos. And so for every power provider, they get a different assigned value. And that's how the traffic from one kind of smart meter system with one power company doesn't interfere with another one. Even if they're right next to each other, they'll just ignore that data. It changes the hopping pattern and it changes just the CRC calculation so that if it got a message inadvertently, it wouldn't do anything with it. This, these packets that go in, they don't have any CRC adder value. So it's just uh, the initialized value is zero. So it's just basically a, a checksum calculation and nothing else. So, uh, you know, I kind of polished up the Python skills and, um, and, and wrote a program that essentially does kind of the, the most basic thing, which some of these packets I saw that all they did was they really looked at kind of the first three bytes of the payload and it seemed to respond with those three bytes. They might set a bit somewhere in there, but they respond with those three bytes. So I wrote a program that basically receives a packet from the modem and then it, it basically captures that source destination address, everything else, it, it swaps them around it increments that counter value, the C1. So if it receives a C1 packet, it responds with a C2. It flips the source and destination so it knows it's going the other way to the modem. And then I, I just took three bytes that are the first three bytes that it sends me as part of its payload, regardless of the length of the payload. I calculate a CRC, I slap a 04 on the end of it, and I send it back to the modem. And surprisingly, that works. Like the modem accepts that as a message and it tries to negotiate. You'll see it going here. It's trying to negotiate back and forth. Um, I respond with a, a C4 because I'm not trying, uh, or a fourth packet because I haven't basically added any level of intelligence to this program yet. Um, but it is quite interesting that it is interacting with it and, and I am able to, to send messages that it completely accepts, which tells me that likely on the mesh network side, um, I could probably put together packets that that side would accept as well. The hurdle to doing that is that it's hopping around, so I have to basically transmit a message to it on the frequency that the meter is currently at as it's hopping around. So there's a couple ways around that. Um, I could either transmit on all frequencies simultaneously. I haven't, I haven't figured out, I haven't tried to, I guess, do that yet, but that's a possibility or if I figure out the hopping pattern, then I could send messages to that side as well. So that'll be for a separate video, separate set of experiments. But 
Um, I thought this was quite interesting to talk about just by itself because of the whole process that we went through. So essentially I figured out how to get the modems to communicate consistently with this router. And then once I did that, I captured that data with the logic analyzer. I took the captured data, which was just an Excel spreadsheet of uh, a bunch of single lines and compiled it all together, put it into a nice format in a document so that I could discover things like the starting bytes and the ending bytes and what looks like a CRC and, and the payload and I'll work on decoding the payload next. And then from there to validate that I did understand it, I wrote the Python program to, to also interact and I can see that the modem is interacting with me and, and I'm making progress there. So quite possibly I could figure out and, and do a more, maybe a better data capture to watch the light turn green and then see, okay, what, what were those last kind of bits of the data capture? What did it do differently than I'm not doing it? And see if I can figure that out. If you enjoy, you know, enjoy this content, subscribe to the channel. I'm on TikTok and Twitter as well. I uh, kind of post some some quicker little updates to TikTok and, and some, you know, immediate type things to, to Twitter of stuff that's discovered. And then I, I save the kind of longer form, more detailed content for, for YouTube. And so I look forward to your comments, your feedback, ideas about what's going on, what you'd like to see next. Uh, anything's welcome. Thanks for watching.